Support for the FUS podcast is brought to you by the letters F, U, and S. Thank you to our constituating listeners. This is Floating Upstream. Oh, F-U-S. I didn't get that. I thought she was making a funny F-U joke. Yeah, yeah, because you wanted a bit more of like a like a formal introduction here. So. I know, but this is but, but, yes, support to viewers like you. So, yes. And movie pass. Movie pass. Uh, I'm gonna add in like a like an awkward like air horn thing after. You should I, put like, together. A, I don't think they would do this. You should bring together like a movie pass jingle, like a 1970s movie pass, <laughs> movie pass, do 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 do, movie pass. So we finally got in our cards after, how the fuck long? Like a month and a half? I feel like the email said three weeks, and that was a lie. I'm that sure. was easily a lie. Because no. <laughs> I think it was that three weeks by the time we got that email. <laughs> yeah, it was absurd how long it was. I don't see how long it takes to print cards. I mean, I guess, I don't know technology, but... I mean, I guess, admittedly, they blew out their expectations of how many people <laughs> they, they thought were going to fucking sign up. So I should have asked, did I tell you about it, or where did you hear about it, or did you tell me? I feel like I told you about had, it. Uh, you told me about it initially. I know, but I feel like their, their, um, their, all of a sudden demand couldn't have been where I, because I found it reading a stock article. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I thought you would, I don't know if you had saw it anywhere else on the internet, unless that they just have, like, really good word of mouth marketing. Because I was like, I didn't see it anywhere, but the... To, like, some degree. I Yahoo don't. Finance article, I, I, uh... Red, which I'm sure there's not a lot of people reading Yahoo Finance articles. <laughs> hey, look, man. They everyone has an audience. <laughs> that, uh, Theirs is just a bit more dedicated than others. Mm-hmm. But so we finally used it, and lo and behold, despite Kate and Brandon's misgivings of thinking it was just a scam, and I didn't think it was a scam. I thought it was going to be technical glitches. Okay. Keep putting words in my mouth. I didn't think it was a scam. I like Everybody a, I tell about it. I like it, putting a lot of things in your mouth. I, I know. Everybody I tell about <laughs> it thinks it's a scam, but I don't believe it. It's I never thought it was a scam. I just thought it was going to be glitchy. I, either way, we fucking walked in there, <laughs> used our cards, and and we fucking waltzed in there, and I felt like I stole a ticket. <laughs> it was pretty cool. It was pretty nice. It was pretty awesome. It really takes the sting out of the like. Uh, you know, fifteen dollar concessions because I saved eight dollars. It does, and it like <sighs> makes you feel way less worried about if what you're going to see is a fucking horrible disaster yeah, or true. not. Mm-hmm. Like it, it makes me I'm not as committed. Yeah, I'm not as committed. I'm actually I'm very curious to see if like the rate of people walking out of films is higher for Movie Pass <laughs> just because like because your time is this the only is thing free. you're sacrificing at that point. Sure, you're telling. Mm-hmm. Like, what if you're dying? Everybody's dying, but what if you're dying? Yeah, if you're dying, dying. Am I going to, like, sit through all of the last Harry Potter movie? I don't think so. Not if I have cancer. <laughs> I still, um, shaky, I still kind of want to, like, use it as much as I can. I am not a, obviously, a business scholar or CEO by any means, but I just don't see how the business model is going to work. I mean, I understand like the Google Facebook premise. You sell people's data, but they, I mean, they, I mean, the bulk seventy percent of Google's revenue is advertising. The Movie Pass isn't advertising. I just don't see that. I don't see there's a lot of. I don't in my head. I don't see a lot of customers that are buying movie viewing data. I feel like there's a very narrow niche of in my movie head, producers, those weird VC firms that our current Secretary of the Treasury like has that weird movie financing business like there's a very there's only a handful of people i can think they're gonna buy movie movie viewing statistics so in my head i kind of feel like we're missing a layer here for some of this because like i agree but also the reason modern movie trailers i think are fucking awful is because of average viewing habits they want to have like some semblance of the plot they want to see, like, some kind of major event. Like, there's a lot of data even put into how people present and advertise movies. And I'm willing to bet there is some kind of... Aud- 
Because, yeah, this is a crazy idea, and I don't see how the fucking math adds up for mm-hmm. any of this. But I feel like someone in a boardroom said something about this to where uh, where everybody is just... Where someone was saying, somebody needs to, like like analyze this stuff a bit further and just be a neutral third party to something. And like, I don't know. Cause otherwise, yeah, I really don't see where the, the money adds up for this unless they cap how many people can be subscribed to it. Yeah. But I don't see that happening. I also don't see that happening, but I don't know. I was like, and I kind of, I was trying to figure out the math earlier. I was like, unless there's some kind of revenue sharing thing, but I was like, it would never be, you would never, I, you like, the individual, per- I would have to watch so many movies for them to make the ten dollars. Why don't they get like a stipend Especially for so many people? Considering go... they pay, theoretically, they pay full price. Well, they have to pay full price because it's just a debit card. It's not a special card. No, it's not. It's just a debit card. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, just... I was like, and I just know unless they, there's like no way for them to make their money back. You think the revenue... theaters, to some degree, are paying a stipend for people to? I don't know, revenue sharing model. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I don't know either. Yeah. But I imagine if, like, if the But movie... then again, how the fuck does Netflix work? Yeah. Yeah, well, Netflix is like, I mean... Like, how, do, how does that work? Like, you're still paying, like... How do you pay for the licensing fee for everyone to, in perpetuity, watch a thing forever? But yeah, but they have the finite amount. You pay $700 million and they have, what, millions of subscribers paying $10 a month? I mean... Yeah, but, like, there's so... Netflix still actually routinely... Loses money. They yes, still, they I do. don't think they've. I don't know. They, they may have had profitable years, but I think they're still like in that startup stage where they're losing money hand over fist like Uber. Probably I mean, so. Nowadays, I think anybody company, any company can lose money forever and still be okay. Apparently, be okay because <laughs> Uber. I loses, need to figure out how to do that. Yeah, like, lose money and still. <laughs> be Uber profitable. loses billions of dollars. I wish that could happen. Because I lose money, I'll, I'm constantly overdrawing my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I need a government bailout. Um. So. But as a consumer, regardless of how crazy the business model must be, I thought the app was seamless. I picked my thing, checked in, scanned, went, and it even worked. Doug went the in-person route, and it worked fine for him. And I went the self-serve kiosk route, and it worked fine. For yeah, me. no no problems at all. You have to be like, what is it, 100 yards from the theater or whatever, mm-hmm. and you got 30 minutes to do it. and Unless you're like an old lady and a walker, you should be able to make it. Or like some crazy line, I guess. But Well, yeah. Well. Actually, yeah, that's probably the one thing I can't think about is like whether or not that still works for like premieres. But I guess so. I don't think I've seen any limitation that says you can't go to a premiere. Mm-hmm. I haven't, um, I haven't looked at the dates, though, so I haven't seen the app. So I wonder if that actually encourages first. theaters to do more of those, like, weird event things where you pay a tad more than what mm-hmm. the base price is, and you get a bag, or whatever the stupid fuck. And... Oh, I would totally go to those if I could use them on MoviePass. But what if, I what, see what if that makes it what... so that you can't use MoviePass? Yeah, no, I was going to say some of those, because actually Regal's doing a, oh, what was it I wanted to see? Darn it, it just came out, or it's coming out. Oh, man, I can't remember now. Darn it, but you, you, like, pre-ordered it through the app or whatever, and you got, like, a $5 combo included. Oh, that'd be kind of cool. It was, like, a free pop, the free, whatever, the $5 popcorn, yeah. medium popcorn, medium drink combo hmm. was included in your ticket or whatever. It was included for only $5 or something. And so I'm assuming that's not in the Movie Pass app, which is fine. I mean, if Movie Pass does figure out how to do that, too... More importantly, where's I need more. I need another glass of wine. Yeah, I need to. I'll get that. <laughs> you drank that a lot faster than I thought you would. Really, Doug? Come on, you went to college with me. I'm a little disappointed in you. I know. If anything, I just sort of had like a a blast of reality there for a moment. Old habits die hard. <sighs> so, Brandon, how's how's your week been? What are you doing? Been watching anything? Uh, no. Because no. I have been... All those big storms, I think, uh, knocked out WoW cable. Knocked out WoW internet on my block. Yeah. And so I was out of internet all weekend, and there was a truck down the street when I left today, so I'm hoping um, it will be fixed. Well, that sucks. Yeah. Um, I've been watching some stuff here and there. I watched... 
it's weird, can I just say, that, like, maybe being a millennial, but, like, it was frustrating because it, just, it wasn't just, like, I lost internet, but then, like, I don't have cable, so I couldn't watch any of my Roku stuff. So it was like, I lost, like, all my forms of entertainment went out the door. Well, your forms of commu- of entertainment watching and half your ways of communicating with other human yeah. beings are just gone. Yeah, out. Which, luckily, I got mobile data on my phone, but, you know, you can only do so much. I'm actually, I was listening to uh, the Giant Bombcast, and uh, they are all stationed, for the most part, in California. Mm-hmm. And you know, What's the Giant Bombcast about? It is, uh, it's a video game podcast that, actually, they're celebrating their 500th episode, Ooh. and they do a weekly podcast, so wow. that's coming up on 10 years. Wow. Uh, they compared it to celebrating your own birthday, and they just sort of went... Uh, 500. And then they went back to what they were doing. I like to celebrate my own birthday. <laughs> um, you know, you're not a person who celebrates your own birthday. I can see that right now. <laughs> I'm a politician, so I'm naturally egotistical. You're natu- so anything that's about me, I love. You're natural <laughs> to celebrate your own accomplishments. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do. Um, People like it, though. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um... But uh, they were uh, they were accounting for some of the you know like forest fire fires oh. and like how half of Northern California is on fire right mm-hmm. now, and one of them was actually uh, Jeff Gersman was uh, specifically describing how like kind of frustrating it was in terms of like social media almost kind of makes it worse because all of a sudden it just makes it so there's a lot of people who aren't in California just going what's going on on a lot of the like support pages that are supposed to be directly feeding the information of where's the fire right now Hmm. do i need to evacuate shit like that Hmm. it was kind of it was it was interesting to kind of think about Mm -hmm. um so back to non sad serious things Mm um happy death day happy (laughs) no not that not yet jump in the gun because a because a a a, wow a h s i don't know why i fucking struggled with that one Yes. Why are we talking about American Horror Story? What? Why are we talking about American Horror Story? Because Kate was watching a bunch of uh, Roanoke, which is the season before the current one now, mm-hmm. that uh, just came on Netflix. And she watched about three episodes and fell asleep. I watched about seven episodes and then fell asleep. <sighs> About seven hours? Yeah. And like three, it's like 45 minutes, I'm assuming. Ish, yeah, 45 minutes, so like... You watched it straight? Yeah. Because I had fucking too? nothing because I was working on my laptop and and Kate was asleep and Lennon was asleep so if I'm gonna fucking do things and just have something playing in the background so I'm not sitting in complete silence okay. <laughs> that is the time to do it uh, so so we had words about American Horror Story even back at Steak and Shake when we were waiting for the movie to start. I think we had words as a strong statement because I don't have strong views on American Horror Story. I just disagree with Doug, and Doug chooses to then use the phrase strong words when I disagree with him, is what I think is actually happening. I didn't say strong words. I said we had words about American Horror Story. No, you just said strong words. You said strong words. I said strong words when you said strong words. What? When you said strong words, I said the phrase. No, you said strong words. Don't lie to me. It'll be really funny if I, like, back it up a little bit and I actually hear... (laughs) Yeah, I'll you, laugh. you go back. You said strong words. I swear you did. So we had words about American Horror Story. Had words. Had words. Had words. Had words. Had words. Hey, tell you what. If I didn't say strong words, I'll make sure that I say strong words. But the magic of editing. <laughs> you're constantly in the future and then immediately in the past. Dun, anyway, dun. that's not, that's something American Horror Story is trying to do. <laughs> It that show is coming to the point where it has a formula to where I think it just needs a fucking law and order fucking sound effect. Like just to throw a dish into a fucking empty swimming pool or something. Has it jumped the shark yet? It's always jumping the shark. It jumped the shark at like season three and then now the shark has just been <laughs> caught in orbit and has been orbiting around. <laughs> Permanently jumping. <laughs> it's never come down yet. Um, Cause like, boy, Roanoke. No oh, man. For real. So like, it's a documentary style thing. Is like the actual thing behind it. So bad. Yeah, and the parts man, I'm where. I'm so disappointed because I thought it was about. I thought it was about like ping- pilgrims and Indians. <laughs> Kinda. That's one of its seventeen plot lines. Oh, okay. 
And, like, the rest of it is this weird thing where, like, the outside story is it's a documentary thing talking about everything that happened. And these are the real people that it happened to or the ones talking directly to the camera and all that. The recreation bit are entirely different actors because it's a dramatization Mm -hmm. or whatever of the thing. Please tell me. Please, for the love of God, tell me Nancy Grace has a cameo. Um, uh... I don't know if Nancy Grace has a Damn. cameo, but I think there's a Nancy Grace stand-in that oh. is there, and she's pretty close. Oh, she has the exact same fucking hair, and she's the same age range. Mm. Damn, they could have gotten Nancy Grace. They, they could have gotten Nancy Grace. I think they had just looked at the price tag, and they were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, no. <laughs> well, but like, we can get an inflatable doll if we got it call it good. But for real, this show gives me sweats, because like... Because, like, the dramatization bits, I have to at some point peel off the layers here and just go, like, so was this the initial thing that they actually shot? Because this whole season feels like they shot a season of American Horror Story and they went, oh, fuck. Oh, this is awful. This is, like, actually terrible. Because, like, the pacing is all over the place. The effects are not great a lot of the time. And, like, characters just show up and die immediately. And, like... Things just happen. They find this guy in a cellar who was locked there for 10 years and is all crazy. And he's like, I know what's going on with all the ghosts. And like, he can like stop them from attacking them and stuff. And then he immediately gets shot by an arrow seven minutes later. And he's sort of dead. But then he shows up later because there's these like cannibal hobo people in the mountains that are turning him into jerky. And then he gets his head smashed with a hammer and then he's gone. And then there's a ghost guy who is, like, from, like, the Victorian era, and he's like, I just want to be left alone. And then they take him, they, he takes them through a secret passage to get him away, and that happens. And, like, just, fuck, dude. Okay. This is also the last season Kathy Bates is in. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know it. I feel like... You don't fucking get Kathy Bates and make her keep playing, like, fucking shitty little throwaway characters. <laughs> Kathy Bates is a seasoned horror actress. She should have her own season where she is the main star. She was a pretty big star in Coven, even though you hate it. She's not really, though. She Like, she dies, and then the season just keeps going for, like, a little longer. Like, if I remember right, there's at least, like, a couple of episodes after she's dead where they're still just doing things. So it doesn't you don't have to end the season just because Kathy Bates dies. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like, I feel like I Kathy Bates wasn't relevant until hadn't been relative recently until American Horror Story came back. And then like that season has all kinds of problems too, because there's a weird beast man face guy and he shows up for a minute and then he goes away. And then there's that lady that weird hippie witch lady who's there for a minute and then I think she disappears or dies or something. I like Coven it makes sense. It has a fluid storyline. Doug's just biased. I think your definition of a <laughs> of a secure because like asylum doesn't make a ton of sense, but thematically, I think asylum makes sense that it doesn't make a lot of sense. I liked the asylum. I know. I, no, I also cool. liked asylum. I'm just saying, like, its story was kind of loose and like not 100 percent finished, and that's fine. Did you have a pen name? Did I forget your pen name? Did I have a pen name? No, Dick don't. Dickerson. <laughs> Just don't forget it. <laughs> Brandon, a.k.a. Dick Dickerson. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I was Doug Schlong Schlanders. <laughs> I don't know. Like <laughs> what about uh, Prickerstein? Prickerstein. <laughs> Uh, PD Prick. P- <laughs> <laughs> Lil PD <Petey> Prick. <laughs> um, we could do a whole other podcast on dick jokes. We could just. How about. Maybe this needs to be an off, uh, off the mic thing, but that should be like an April Fool's episode. It's an episode where we just talk about dick jokes the entire time. Uh, I think I, I'm, I'm real hard on that idea. I got like a half chunk going. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway oh, yeah. Roanoke I think is I'm awful a lot of people were a lot of people were saying it was awful and I just really needed to see it for myself I have no it I've actually talked to some people that are like I watched the first like four or five episodes and then I stopped watching each season 
And I was like, why? And they were like, because I get to see the weird thing they decided to do for the season, and then I don't have to stay around for when they start trying to wrap up the terrible plot. And I'm increasingly to the point where I'm like, you know what? That might actually be a better way to go, because, boy, Cult, the, uh, the new one, is not great either. Uh, but, like, for real, like, they didn't get to the Cult stuff until, like, episode four. I want to watch it. My uh, manager at work watches it. Uh, that's fine. Um, I watched the first episode. Uh, if you need a quota of masturbating clowns, yeah. like, met to you, that that show definitely has a lot more oh, per yeah, capita. Yeah, this season was too... Uh, like, I don't know, they've got... Like, seasons lately have got... It was way too sexual. Like, I'm not, like, a prude or anything, but I was just, like, it's just really a lot of sex stuff. And I was just, like, it just... If you like a lot of sex stuff, you should watch The Deuce. I feel like it's just distracting from, like, the... I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, but, uh, boy. Just every... Just every season since 3 onwards, I just... Con- like I said before, even in the restaurant, I really honestly feel like I shouldn't have, like, seven well, paragraphs well, 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 explaining the plot. Calling Steak and Shake a restaurant is giving you too much credit. Okay, <laughs> fine. We were at, when we were at the Sugar Shack. <laughs> it's a diner. It's not a restaurant. It, it was a dive. <laughs> was it a dine-in? I don't know. I think or was it a drive? Dine, was it a drive? Drive. I had to get the trifecta in for Doug's favorite show. Flavor Town. Dine is drive is the dine. No, we went to Flavor Town. We went to Flavor Town. Oh my god. What a terrible Best name city for... in the USA. Flavor Town. Flavor Town. Um, uh, we really make fun of Guy for you too much on this podcast. Well, he's I don't a, know if we have made he's a lit, Doug likes to make I love you, Guy, if you're listening. He's a lit Roman candle in a warehouse factory of fireworks. It's not hard to spot him. <laughs> Get it? Because his pointy hair is I the lit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got it, Doug. <laughs> I put it together. Jeez. You just don't like that man's hair. I don't like, I don't like a lot of hair. things about that dude. Oh. But yeah, I don't like his hair. I don't think his restaurants are very good either. I've never been to one of his restaurants. I've been to, like, I've been to Flavortown. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's hilarious. So, yeah. Hold on, I gotta Google this. <laughs> In the meantime, American Horror Story. Flavortown. <laughs> Okay. Hey Alexa, what's going? No, Google. Wait, Google, Google doesn't have a name for theirs. No. Uh, Flavor Town, USA. Oh, it gives them the diners, drive-ins, and dives webpage. That's weird. Guy Fay's American tablet impression known for hosting the TV show. Where's the? You list under like Flavor Town. Oh my eyes are. <laughs> If this whole podcast was you just struggling to read things, I would be into that too. <laughs> Can I just get you like a candle and like a very long? Urban, book? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, uh, oh, wait, this is gonna be great. Urban uh, Dictionary's definition for flavor town. <laughs> record scratch. Wicker wicker wick. Oh, this should be great. Oh, that's all. That's all. Yeah. That's sad. That was even cooler. <laughs> Why is it sad? No, okay. So one definition of, okay, flavor, (laughs) hold on, flavor, capital F, space, T, capital town. This is a destination that has amazing food. Since the food is so good, this must be where flavor lives, and you have to get there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm literally crack. I don't like you where my eyes are. My eyes are, like, stinging. He's brought to tears by anything that questions (laughs) Guy (laughs) Fieri. His Lord and Savior, Guy Fieri. My eyes have been hurting lately. Uh, commonly referenced in diners, drive-ins, and dives. The second one, not a bad one, getting the girl in your sack. With your sack? I took my girl to Flavortown last night for the first time. It was amazing. This is Flavortown, no space, capital F. <laughs> so, boys and girls, be sure you're using Flavortown correctly. <laughs> Any other way, you could be, probably be good to take your girl to Flavor Town, no matter which definition you choose. <laughs> that was Brandon's. It, actually, that could be a segment as Brandon's <laughs> Urban Dictionary moment. <laughs> oh my gosh, Brandon reads Urban Dictionary stuff. Or I should really read Rap Genius. I asked my one of my friends uh, when I worked in Oakland. She was from the Hood. I just did 
parentheses, so y'all know. This is parentheses? Big air quotes. Or air quotes, not parentheses, air quotes. I mean, it's a physical quotes representation of, of quotation marks. But, no, parentheses are these things. Yeah. Sure. Parentheses, okay. Just so y'all know, I'm, an making, automatopo- I'm making motions with my hands. An automatopoeia. Yeah, okay. She was from the hood, which she actually really was from the hood. Um, what does she do, what does she do, divine as the hood? It's the West Side trait. Uh, okay, side. yeah, sure. I don't know. She was West Side and the whole big West Side East Side. Well, rivalry. okay, so that means she's from like the same area as like Big Sean. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can get that. Um. Oh, anytime I had whatever a question about whatever, she told me to go to Rap Genius. I never actually go to Rap. I've gone to Rap Genius, but. It'd be you know, funny star hip hop too. If funny. you want to watch some like awesome wiped out videos. <laughs> funny if I read a uh, rap genius uh, quotes. Um, Again, uh, gosh, you add we add so much crap to this. <laughs> so much edit. crap. We Come need to on. spread these out. I just think they're hilarious, but we need to spread it out. <laughs> we need to split the love. Find some nice way to segue into what we're actually supposed to talk about. Well. Because I was also going to say I'm going through all of Big Sean's catalog, oh, by the God. way. What, what is, oh, we God. Say catalog one more time. Discography. I'm, God, I'm so sorry. I knew sorry. you were going to say discography because I knew we were going to have this argument again. You can just say songs. I was listening to Big Sean's songs <laughs> recently. <laughs> songs? But what would you His call it? collections of songs. I think catalog sounds pretty pretentious not as pretentious. But discography is literally no, the word i know discography sounds even more pretentious but you're not a music producer like you don't need to go saying discography i mean that's fine so like what would you say if i specifically i downloaded all four of his albums that is his record studio albums albums i was listening to his albums recently. okay fine i was that's listening through his first. albums recently someone suggested an idea for a youtube video that like i was intrigued enough by that i think i i sort of have something boiling on the plate at the moment that i'm sort of curious to do and right now i'm going through all of big sean's albums thank you um his second album has aged horribly I'm actually kind of shocked. Is his first song, one is, is great. Is Big so. Sean even relevant? I don't even know his stuff on the radio anymore. He he is <laughs> always feels like he has been like a three out of five, like just a guy who's there, <laughs> like because like the biggest he's ever been was his first album because he had like fucking Marvin Gaye and Chardonnay oh, and then good song. uh ass 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 ass, ass. Mm-hmm. ass. good song. Um, five asses out of five. Yeah, five ass. Did that, did, hey, if anything gets five asses out of five, it's Big Sean's ass. Is <laughs> I forget the actual name of that song. It's not ass. No, which is weird. I know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, but the, yeah, like we that. Were that in that first then still weren't we? Yeah. God. So yeah, that that album came out like when I think Obama was running for office. Mm. Um, game, Charlie, a good song. It's a good song. There's a lot of songs on that that's really great. His second album is like kind of terrible. I'm kind of curious. Marvin Gaye's not live, right? Is he alive? I don't think Marvin Gaye. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think, it's really... I think that's like... why there's a lot of songs. That yeah, I was like curious what he would think about all these songs. But <laughs> there's that that other that hipster punk band that's like, uh, let's get it on or Marvin. Marvin Gaye, Gaye and get, get it, it on. on. Actually, that's a uh, fucking Pluth or whatever his fucking name is. Char- Charlie Pluth. Or something. Kind of hipsterish. No, he's like a pretty song. boy pop guy that girls I fucking want to love to death. Song. Hmm? Marvin Gaye and Get It On? I guess it's pop. That's Marvin Gaye. It has Megan Trainer in it. Yeah, that's fine. I guess that's what pop is. Like, okay, so he was hanging out with a lot of rappers. Like, he's he's done a song with uh, Wiz Khalifa. He's done a song with Lil Wayne. Back when both of those people were relevant and not kind of clowns. But... <laughs> Wiz Khalifa's not a clown. He's kind of a clown oh. now. Little Wayne's not a clown. Mm. He's called Little Wayne a clown. He's a That's... drug addict. He's many things. He's not a clown. Okay. <laughs> In my opinion, he's not a clown. That's fine. That's fine. But, like, would you really say he's as good now as he was, like, like around like around the time I mean, of, like... Really, he doesn't really do anything now. Not I know. Yeah, like, he, they just he sort of evaporated, is what I mean. Yeah. Um, they run out of drug money, and then they make a new album. Kind of fucking drives me nuts. <laughs> Horrible, but, but hilarious. Um, Can I say the big song? Big Sean is better than being one of those rappers that are only ever featured on other people's albums. Yeah, yeah. 
Because Wait, who's a good example of that? Of people that only show up in fucking features yeah. or whatever. So Lil Pump was that. Actually, most of like the new people in rap this year were that, mm-hmm. and most of them have been terrible. Mm-hmm. And that sucks. <laughs> I'm like, what do you think about uh, uh Kim uh, uh uh Kim No Nikki. Nicki Minaj was that for like um, a while actually. What do you think about Lil Yachty? <sighs> Little Yachty is like this weird I like Lil Yachty. I like Lil Yachty, but like I don't he know. He was in Raleigh. I didn't get to when I was there. I think I. Oh, you got to went. meet him. He I was didn't at, meet him. But he was he at the Seven Eleven. Shut the fuck up. could have Uber. I wonder if I, if I would have Ubered him. That would be cool. Um, did I ever tell you? I'm sure I probably told you, told you this. My first Uber trip was. Big Sean. No, was actually I took these Greek kids to from because I live next to the university to a concert. And I would imagine if we could do this all of it. Uh, it was a guy and two girls. The guy was in a was in the fraternity. The girls were in a sorority. And the guy's fraternity was hosting this rapper. They had like bought out this club and was hosting a party that this rapper was attending downtown. I actually took like two or three cars to this party. Yeah. And I really it really frustrates me. I wish I could remember the rapper's name, but. It was like a rapper that I had, like, heard on the radio. Like, it was like a real rapper. Oh, that's neat. And I was like, God, I wish our, like, if, uh, if the Olivet Fraternities had that much money to, like, hire, to just, to just hire rappers, rapper. I was just like, that's just insane. That would be fun. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Just boggles my mind. Um, but yeah, Lil Yachty is a guy that I... Tentatively interested. I'm doing like the the burns, like tenting my fingers and like kind of waiting to see what happens with him. Actually, the person I'm like, <laughs> if you want to see a more extreme version of Lil Yachty, there's this guy named Ugly God. <laughs> what about Lil Uzi? I think he was one night. Le- he's one, one of those new people. He is Why actually. They all look? That's the that's the ironic that the hipster thing? black person thing to do oh. this year is like go hey you remember when everybody was named Lil what if we did that again I thought everybody was big now that's just going down the little it's like a the yeah. pendulum yeah. one yes that is that is there's quite big literal Sean, there's big big Papa yeah big... Uh, there's a uh, uh, big big Puffy a big Diddy I think it was big Diddy at some point mm-hmm. now it's just Diddy again mm-hmm. so he got a little smaller again. <laughs> so they all switch to little. So, yeah, but... A lot of them are shorter, though. Yes, they are. Big like, Sean is, like, 5'6". <laughs> yeah, what's his name? Uh, he's not even little, though. Ray Schwimmer is, like, really short. Yes, he is. He is less. So hard to say. Oh, but for real, though, like, like Ugly God has a lot of promotional pictures of him wearing, like, the Ash Ketchum Pokemon hat. And, like, oh <laughs> fucking weird. Like, his first, like, mixtape has a picture of, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! shit photoshopped on it very poorly. <laughs> There's a song he has that says, that's called Fuck Ugly God. And it's just a crowd cheering Fuck Ugly God. I think it might be sampled from a show that he did that went badly. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's it's kind of awesome. And I actually, I posted one song to your Facebook from... Uh, from him called Stop Smoking Black and Miles. <laughs> what? what did you post? I didn't see that. That was like months ago. Oh, I must have missed it. Well, I'll pull it up oh. afterwards. <laughs> it's, funny. He's fucking oh weird. That's I'm very super interested. funny because I literally, literally smoked a black and mild last night. <laughs> and I had it smoked. My car reeks of it still. I'm regretting doing it now. That is that is also a thing he comments on in that song. <laughs> and that's... When he comments on, you notice, I didn't ever notice, maybe I'm, I just ignored it or I fought the pain. Like, maybe it's cigars where I'm just smoking around. It, like, burns your tongue. Yeah, it does. My... It's very harsh, like, in general, as opposed to, like, a cigar. I wanted to look up, I was going like, to Google. I wanted to Google all natural cigars. It's 5.15. we got to wrap this up. i got a thing to go to. Oh, shit. So, here's a quick segment where uh, Doug says a thing that may or not may not be real on the internet <sighs> as we transition to our movie of conversation. Did you know that when two men are fighting naked and a woman is trying to suck one of their dicks, it is called a hobo with a shotgun? <laughs> what? I should have a dictionary that... <laughs> <laughs> That's the idea for other people's term dictionary. <laughs> so, 
Happy Death Day! Happy Death Day! And then I'll like play the the, the you play Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday! Music. Yeah, that's in the public domain, right? Yes, yeah, okay. it was officially ruled to be in the public domain again. Oh, good. I think ultimately it was because like it was, you know that like that thing of like when a term becomes so generic that like you can't defend it mm-hmm. anymore anyway. Like what fucking happened to Kleenex and and Q Tip and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Actually, did you see that viral video? Like, as a quick aside, <laughs> did you see that viral video of those uh, singing lawyers that were trying to get people to not do that for uh, for uh, what was it Xerox? I think mm-hmm. because people uh, because that term is starting to become so generic that they can't. Oh, I don't know who anymore. Drew Estate is. What he is like the only producer of natural cigars apparently. Yeah, I Google natural cigars. The entire first, literally all of the, the first um, links on Google are cigars by Drew Estate. Brand. Have you seen that uh, company started up in Cuba that's selling like uh, vape versions of uh, Cuban cigars? Actually, apparently, whoever this guy is, Drew Estate Natural is a conglomerate that makes natural dirt, natural juice, natural English. Interesting. Natural Irish hops, natural Man. root. These guys, natural dirt. <laughs> that guy has a very specific market. <laughs> um, so happy mm-hmm. death day. Oh, so I know. Man, I'm on. We I'm we got to use rifle. we got to use our first uh, movie pass excursion on an MTV movie pass. Movie we need pass. some kind of cool. Like I said jingle. Some kind of doo doo. Maybe not even. I don't know. I want something. I'll add like a fairy do dust like editing <laughs> magic in the yeah. There you go. What's that one? You should do the. I don't know if you I think they still do it. Uh, man, it's like the PBS. Oh, man, what is it? That one where the star flies in. Like oh yeah, dun, 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 dun. yeah, whatever that is. Um. So that was like an MTV original movie. Like, <laughs> I got curious when I noticed that but, it was. And a, what movies? I thought they used to totally have a whole like movie studio production. Uh, production MTV I, production department. Yeah, they they used to go a lot harder on that. I feel like the second people realized rated R horror movies were doing pretty good in theaters, they mm-hmm. kind of stopped doing that because mm-hmm. it's lame to see someone cut away when somebody gets stabbed. But, uh, yeah, so... MTV could have done whatever. Happy Death Day? Yeah, totally. No, I mean, they could have done an R-rated horror movie. Not on TV. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought they actually made real movies. They might have made one or two. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, you're probably right. Or at least they had, like, a production studio. Doing, if you know like... what, if you think about it, now that you mention it, like, there was never... It never, like, there was no blood in that movie. No. Now that you think Not about a lot. It. No, the most little... blood, I think, is like when that dude gets shot at the end, or what? Hey, mm-hmm. big spoilers. When that dude gets shot at the end, or whatever, with the bullets in the hospital. Yeah. I think that was it. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. that and when that one bitch gets little... kicked out of the window. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I said that yeah. one bitch to avoid spoilers. <laughs> Um, no, yeah. yeah, that's true. You know, I didn't think about it until like, looking back out of it, that there was not a lot of blood. No, it's actually like a pretty tolerable, like, I would almost define it as more of like an adventure movie than a horror movie. Mm-hmm. What, it was PG-13, I remember, mean, Yes, it? yes it was. I, you know, I didn't even notice that either. <laughs> I guess I thought it was R. But not really, because there wasn't enough sex for it to be R. Not that yeah, that, there was no <laughs> mandatory no booty scene. That, sh- if that was rated R, that would have opened with her having sex with the dude the morning oh, right. of, like, every time. <laughs> oh, hey, Except right. she didn't sleep with him. <sighs> Spoilers. Fuck. Spoilers. What the fuck? Spoilers. I'm actually gonna spo- like just censor you out so that. <laughs> it's not a spoiler. She was clean. Was clearly out of her league. She was out of his league. Excuse me. <laughs> just Ex- excuse me. My movie range. Are you? She's shit- out of my league. Are you shitting on my beautiful boyfriend who is so beautiful and so hot? He wasn't that great. So, she, no, he wasn't. She was that that girl in that movie. I fucking wish I looked up her name. Uh, she is the fucking standout of that movie. She's mm-hmm. she's great. She has a lot of range. She did. She has a lot more range than I was expecting her to have. Mm-hmm. Happy Death Day, actors. <clears throat> you just <laughs> do you just use the voice thing with? Jessica Rothenberg. Jessica Rothenberg. Jessica Rothenberg. Can you look up and see like if she's done anything else like yep, recently? I'm working on it. Um, he looks wow. What's his name? Looks a lot better. And <laughs> well, that's true of like a lot of people. She died eleven times in the movie. Yeah. Spoiler. Damn. And that's what the, I'm gonna censor that part out too. That's so what it <laughs> says. Movies, Lala Land. 
Happy Death Day. Wait, she was in... Oh, right. We talked about that yesterday. Lily and Kate. What the fuck is Lily and uh, Kate? Parallels. The preppy connection. Okay. The hot flashes. Summertime. Forever My Girl. <laughs> Wolves. The Last Keepers. The Tribe. Jack, Jules, Esther, and me. Trust Fund and Bastards of Young. Trust Fund sounds like a good name for a thing, but I don't think a movie. Um, but, uh... So, yeah, she she's fucking awesome. She plays... She, okay. That movie does a great job of subverting your expectations, because I was all in all just ready for a shitty, slocky, schlocky slasher movie. Totally was. I set the bar real low. And they, they happily exceeded it. Yeah, and they put you in just the right mindset, too, because all the characters start off shitty. Everybody is just an awful human being. Oh, she was in a movie. Or she was in a TV show. She was in a movie. <laughs> huh. She was in a movie, Mary plus Jane. Okay. Uh, Mary plus Jordan Jane. Jordan and Paige, 20-something entrepreneurs, are just really trying to find success in L.A. with the businesses that focus on running a marijuana delivery service. The okay. app is getting popularity among a list of customers. Huh. That sounds neat. I might watch that. Around. Is that on Netflix? Uh... Uh, but anyway, uh, I guess to avoid spoilers somewhat, because boy, real easy to fucking spoil this movie, but at the very least we don't have to... Explain the time mechanic thing because that's like in every fucking trailer and shit. But like, except for they never explain it. <laughs> no, yeah, for real. If you want answers, th- th- do you know what this movie does by the end? It I goes, just wanted an Aztec amulet. It would have been so simple. Just put an Aztec. She's just amulet. pissing on an Aztec amulet. Oh every my time. gosh, Doug, you're gonna find this fucking hilarious. Guess what network Mary plus Jane was on. Uh, I have no idea. MTV. Yeah! <laughs> it all comes full <laughs> circle. Oh my gosh, that was too funny. That's good. That was too funny. I think the podcast is over. That's a true <laughs> victory. <laughs> um, oh. But yeah, that, uh, that, th- that movie goes to montage almost immediately. It goes to montage like 20 minutes in. <laughs> That's a good montage. Right? No, it was a good montage. It's just... I, I was like, oh, we're doing this now? No, I totally was like, I was like, oh, I was like, is this almost over? We got like 15 minutes left. <laughs> final <laughs> ending montage. 45 minute movie. <laughs> final ending montage. Ready to go? Um, it could have almost been a 45 minute movie. It could have been. Like, I was, it could have trimmed some fat off. The last 15 minutes, I was like, ready to go. When yeah. she woke up that last time, you thought she won, she didn't win. I was like, Spoiler alert, she didn't win, but she thought she won. I was like, damn. I was like, no! <laughs> uh, it's a, it's, it was fun, though. It was a fun movie. For seeing free, it was not horrible. <laughs> so what is your final rating oh, for damn. Happy Death Day? My final rating is... Two unnecessary horror movie titty flashes out of five. Bam! Mm-hmm. Low bar. I will give... I'm going to give Jessica Rothenberg Ooh. four unnecessary titty flashes yeah. out of horror movie out of five. We want to see more stuff with her. I like Jessica. I think she, she's a skinny blonde, so... Totally would bang her. Well, yeah, I'd say she's but in the real house anyway. She's pretty hot. She's in your list, of, like similar to the founder. She's in your list of interests. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty. Yeah, you know, she's physically appealing, but she also uh, has some acting chops behind that body. I'm gonna give this three. <laughs> I'm gonna give this three <sighs> shittier teen slasher movies out of out of five. You could have just said three screams, Doug. We all know what you're talking no, about. Scream is good. What the fuck? What? You... Scream is Get not the good. Get the fuck out of my face. Scream oh, isn't good. God, I can't handle it. Fuck you. you. Scream oh. one and two are amazing. Oh, God, no. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? If you want shit, you should fucking watch the the later I know what you did last summer movies. You want to know how the third one ends? The fucking they guy they've been stuck. No. Actually, the guy they've been that's been stalking them for two other movies turns out to be a weird fish ghost guy who has a ghost ship that he chases them around with. 
What? He does not. No, that's totally real. I believe you. That is completely real. I liked him. Oh, the first one's good. Of course you would think that's good. God, whatever. You're such a How do we have, like, such opposite oh, <laughs> tastes? I don't know why we're friends. Between this and wine. <laughs> oh, yeah, we went to the Renaissance Fair. I, don't really I guess know. I'll edit that's this into podcast. the beginning part. A different podcast. We won't edit another time. Okay. Maybe not. Well, no, yeah, it's 5.30. I gotta eat early. Okay. I'm so tired. Stay tuned for our double feature in this double feature episode. <laughs> where my co-host and his wifey <gasps> talk about it. Da-da-da-da. It. Da-da-da-da. And then I think we're going to be it. seeing... You should do like a, one of like that classic 1950s Hitchcock women screaming breaking glass, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, that'd be thing good. right there. It's like a transition. Mm-hmm. That'd be pretty good. Double feature, show. Hey everybody, how's it going? So, uh, me and Kate kind of collectively talked about it, and Kate kind of doesn't feel like she really has that much to add. So I'm just kind of, kind of, I'm just gonna sum up here, kind of. So it, it part one, technically speaking. So this is a movie that I have feelings about, but I kind of feel like a larger discussion about this movie can't really be done until part two is out because comparisons to the original film are somewhat incomplete because the original film is like three hours long and has both parts of the story, whereas this is just part one. So to just sort of more summarize our thoughts on this. There are bits I love about this movie and there are bits that afterwards that people have been talking about that I think I sort of agree with. I don't know if it entirely colors my opinion of the film itself, but I do think it's important to talk about. So the bits that I was like really surprised by are there are a lot more jokes in this movie than I was expecting. There are more jokes in this movie than there are jump scares. Um, As a whole you know, you're not going to beat Tim Curry. You never were going to. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, the kid actors, I will say, you know what? They actually did a great job of finding a bunch of kid actors that I don't define as shit kids. Just terrible kid actors ruin my experience with a movie. And somehow they found one, two, three, four, five, six, Six, seven, seven kids, I think. Seven main kid cast characters. Seven kids in the main cast, I think, including the bully. Yeah, I think so. They didn't make my skin crawl. None of them individually really made, like, me just want to die. And, like, good on them, honestly. Like, I'm actually really shocked they were able to do that. Um, they're... <laughs> This movie has, like, a weird obsession with new kids on the block. Uh, this game is, like, re- this game. This movie is, like, really obsessed with reminding you that it's the 90s, which gets a little overbearing. Uh, there are bits in the later part of the film that I think are kind of fun, like how everything that they are f- afraid of has a red sheen to it. Has, like, some integrating of red to uh, to whatever it happens to be. And, uh, the one thing I would really say that I'm not really, uh, what's the looking for here? Um, that I'm not really digging on that other people have touched on is, uh, the stuff involving the, uh, the girl in the story, because the main thing with hers is her, uh, is her sexual assaulting molester of a father and the part that sucks about that is that she is also sexualized in the movie not so so the one thing that i sort of lose the thread on and at least at the very least i didn't take away from this is that somebody points out that there's a scene a slow motion scene of her taking off her dress and jumping in a river or whatever I guess I would need to watch the movie again because in my head that movie that scene was like a fourth of a second and to me that was more to put the audience in the perspective of the other uh, 
the other boys, at least what they're looking at. And I'm not saying that makes it better. I'm not even saying I disagree with what other people are saying. It's just for me specifically, I don't feel like that is an instance of her being sexualized because she's like 13. Because in my head, why would you do something like that? So like to me, I didn't interpret it like that. I'm not saying it's incorrect, an incorrect viewpoint. In fact, like the whole reason I'm bringing it up is because I think it's a valid and important thing to talk about. Um, I'm trying to think if there's really anything else to bring up with the movie. Um, the final scene where they all kick the shit out of the clown, spoiler alert, I guess, is pretty good. Um, there are large bits of CG that are fucking awful in that movie. There is a couple of bits that are fucking awesome. Like there's the part with the fucking fat loser kid in the library. And there's just this librarian that's just doing a creep smile, like in the background and stuff in slow motion. It's super good. But can there be one fucking real red balloon in this fucking movie? Seriously. Can there just be one at all? Christ. Anyway, so that's just sort of more of our general thoughts on the movie. Like it's fine. It's, it's, it's fine. You know, I don't know how excited anyone can be about a fine movie, but it's fine. And again, I think a larger discussion about that movie can be made when part two comes out, which as far as I know is like next year question mark or something. So I guess we'll see. Uh, anyway, I guess we'll, uh, wrap up with that. Thank you for joining me, and I hope my singular voice has not been seriously bothersome to you. Bye-bye! Oh yeah, plug your shit real quick. Your your Facebook, your uh, magic stuff. What magic stuff? Oh, well, if you're a Magic the Gathering fan, go to mtginfinite.com Catch up on all the latest news from the Magic the Gathering universe. Universe. <laughs> Does Magic the Gathering have like like music? Mm, no. No? There's no like like composer that was like m- music inspired by the cards. Well, I mean it's not and the it's lore. Not audio, you know. Well, I know, but like there was never cards, like there's no like sound. Cause like they just started recently. It wasn't until like a year or two ago they started doing short trailers for each set. Yeah, I thought that was actually like a visual, like a, I don't know, like a, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because imagine you don't see Magic the Gathering commercials, you know. Fair enough. There was rumors Hasbro signed a seven movie deal with the Universal. That was a result of the GI Joe Transformers etc. movies. There was a rumor one of those was there was a script being written for a Magic movie. But it never came to fruition. That sucks. Like the Roger Rabbit 2. Considering Uh, how much of a nightmare Warcraft was to make. Roger Rabbit 2 will never come to fruition. And considering Warcraft was literally working with an infinite budget forever. And it just barely squeaked out. I can probably see why it would be hard. Eh, I don't know. I think they went. I want to see one still. Hopefully they're supposed to be doing an MMO. Yeah, it was too funny. Good Good job. An MMO. Which That'd be cool. They crazy. should still make you play Magic the Gathering to fight other people. <laughs> no. I I'm would love to make an orc in... guy and he still pulls out a deck of cards. Let's play. Shut up. No, I'm interested Why to see... wouldn't that be cool? I'm interested to see if they're going to do... if they're Which route they're going to take. Like, you as a like creature character in the game. Yeah. Or you as a... As the planeswalker, which is what you're supposed to be now, the powerful mage who summons shit. Yeah. So if they like do you as that, and then you like summon shit, or you have like I think it'd be cool to like set it up to where like you know you had like you have a seven card hand in magic, so you had like a seven card spell slot or like ability slot, and then you could move them around. Yeah. You know whatever, learn and move them around. So we'll see how it's gonna go. Fair enough. The people they they hired, they like stole a bunch of big moves. Like the people that worked on the um, Star Wars Old Republic MMO. Yeah. And a couple other big industry names. Hasbro got some big people to work on it. So. Okay. I have high hopes. High Let's hopes. See. Oh, high hopes. We'll see. Magic is not, not doing pretty good with their digital high offerings. High hopes. High hopes.
Good podcast, Doug. Hooray! Okay. Um, I'm done. Dickerson out. <laughs> Dickerson out. Dickerson is pulling out of this podcast. Oh, stop. Damn it. I <laughs> set myself up for that one. Was Somebody kidding. was fucking talking about, like, a sex shot. I was listening. Oh, damn it. We didn't do the fucking series spotlight. What are you? Are you watching something? Uh, uh, oh damn it! What about you? Can watching? just recommend the Ozarks again if you're still watching that. No, I finished. What about it. Star Trek? Are you no. watching Star Trek? HBO or uh, Hulu? Uh, Dirk Gently and the Holistic Detective Agency. Funny, quirky, uh, very interesting show. I've never really seen anything like it. If you like Elijah Wood. Oh okay. There you go. Uh, I'm watching a uh, anime shonen series called uh, called Will and Grace. Oh, which... <laughs> <laughs> You're not even watching Will and Grace. Yes, I'm right? watching Will and Grace. What? I'm watching it from the first season onwards. Oh god, well, that sounds horrible. Why does that sound horrible? Oh, I thought you I liked Will and Grace. I've seen most of it, so that's why I don't want to start all over again. Why? I haven't seen most of it. Well, yeah, I was gonna say like I've seen a total of four episodes I ever. The, really? Oh, I used to watch it all the time. Like I just recently kid. saw the episode where <sighs> they're gonna have a baby together or whatever, and Will leaves his semen sample on the table, mm-hmm. and then uh, what's her face? That's Grace's friend mm-hmm. uh, uses it as floor cleaner. And I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> I don't think they actually end up having a baby. Oh, yo! Spoiler also, alert. oh. Also, you should watch the Where's My 40 Acres podcast. It's a really good hip hop podcast. Watch. You should listen. Yes. I have to be that guy. I'm just going to sit in awkward silence. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut it. <laughs>